I know a woman whose brand new husband dumped her on the plane on the way back from their Maldives honeymoon, a fortnight was all he'd needed to confirm his regrets. Another friend speaks in hushed, pain tones about her ill-fated honeymoon in Southeast Asia. She recalled, pretty much any trip we've had before or since was better than that three-week-long march from one room to another of flower petal strewn beds. The couple developed a permanent romance hangover and spend most of their time doing nothing wilder than eating. Then they got food poisoning. And then there's the couple that, nearly three years into their marriage, is still on honeymoon. 1000 days of romance. So apparently they're doing lots of couch surfing to save money which falls far lower on the totem pole of passion. While Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve are broadly acknowledged as amateurs' nights, only the most naive of teenagers gets conned into spending out for Eve that somehow when it comes to honeymoons, the need for a great display of romance seems to grow ever more urgent. What a waste! A straw poll of my friends records rather meager returns on their honeymoons. From overspends to just being bored, they were, for the most part, underwhelmed. Royal Honeymoon, where will the Duke and Duchess of Sussex go? And this is hardly surprising, the whole concept of the honeymoon is remarkably out of date, it hails from an era of late 19th century Britain, in fact, when premarital cohabitation was frowned upon. Upon marriage you were, at least in theory, opening up a whole new world of physical fun. In the same way that, were you to suddenly take acrobatics for the first time, you might wish to have a week or so to intensively hone your skills, couples of your found entertainment and post-nuptial. Declarations. But let's get real, the vast majority of today's couples cohabit. Sex is not novel. But here is what is, the rising cost and distance traveled on these increasingly exotic trips. Until you name your children, your choice of honeymoon is your biggest joint personal statement as a newly minted mister. This is what most dream honeymoons look like these days, you're supposed to fly to a remote beach and spend a few weeks staring into each other's eyes. Never mind that there's absolutely nothing to do. Never mind that the food is a bit meh. Never mind that the ensuite leaves some details rather less remote than you might wish. Never mind that, it took forever to get there, you're looking at a minimum of 22 hours flying time to get to Tahiti where, in high season, right after your summer wedding, the best hotels charge from £1,000 a night. These trips are as scripted as many a best man speech, which makes for an awkward truth for the travel industry, while honeymoon packages may not necessarily add to the romance, they do add to the price tag. The average British couple spends £3,630, the second highest wedding-related cost, after the venue hire, according to the wedding planning website Hitch. But you could quite easily pay three times that without blinking if you're bound for the Seychelles or Bora Bora, the world's most romantic city. Credit, Getty My Own Honeymoon was to Venice, the world's most romantic city, right? Because work commitments left us only a short amount of time to play with, we spent five days staying in a palazzo, eating well, and wandering around in a post-wedding daze. It was fun, but even in a pre-Instagram age, we still felt pressure to be having the A month later I accompanied my husband on a three-week work-related road trip around Ireland which was, frankly, far more fun. Who honeymoons in Ireland? You should. Perhaps Harry and Meghan should. For there's far more romance to be found in a quiet booth in a higgledy-piggledy old pub while musicians perform around you, or in a walk along Rausnola, than there is in sitting on a beach with nothing to do. But you might also go on safari, go on a great walking holiday, or perhaps even, in the spirit of those couples of your, learn a new skill. You might also take a page from that woman I know who was dumped on the plane home from the Maldives, a few years later, she remarried. Smaller dress. Smaller wedding. 
and the happy pair used the cash which could have paid for their honeymoon as a down payment on their new house. To me, that's real romance.